Welcome back to another Anim of the Week. In today's video, we'll be looking at the Gastric Brooding Frog, a pretty normal looking frog that has one truly remarkable brooding technique. Gastric Brooding Frog refers to a genus of two different species of frog, the Southern Gastric Brooding Frog and the Northern Gastric Brooding Frog. They are part of the family Myobotrachidae, more commonly known as Australian ground frogs. Sadly, both species are now extinct, and by that I mean fully extinct, not just extinct in the wild. However, despite all being dead, they more than deserve their own episode due to how strange and unique these frogs once were, and because of how interesting the ongoing de-extinction efforts are. As these are part of the family known as the Australian ground frogs, it's no wonder that they live in Australia. Both the northern and southern gastric brooding frogs lived in very small areas of Queensland. The southern species lived almost entirely within the Conondale and Blackall mountain ranges north of Brisbane. The northern species inhabited Yungella National Park near to Mackay, much further up the coast from Brisbane. Though separated by hundreds and hundreds of miles, within these two tiny ranges the two species inhabited the same sort of environment. High elevation rainforest streams and rivers, preferring the rocky and shallow areas of these bodies of water. They were never seen more than a few metres away from the water and had very restricted movement which contributed to their extinction. Being frogs means that they ate your standard frog things, mostly insects but also smaller frogs. The frogs were observed to take large prey such as large beetles underwater to eat them as they could more easily overpower them when in the water. We know about their diet because they have been observed eating these things on a few occasions when they were found in the wild, but more concrete evidence about their diet and feeding behaviour was recorded from individuals in captivity, but sadly the last living captive gastric brooding frog died in 1983. Now this is where the gastric brooding frog gets its namesake from. The thing that makes this frog so unique is its ability to brood young in its stomach, something that is not done by any other known frog species. The breeding process starts like most other frogs. The female lays her spawn and the male will externally fertilise them. However, this is where the frogs deviate, as instead of leaving the spawn in the water to develop, the female swallows it. Each clutch contains around 40 individuals, however only around 20 young have ever been seen to come back out of the mother, which suggests that some eggs may be digested by the mother. To stop all of the eggs being digested, the spawn produces a substance called PGE2, which acts to cease the production of hydrochloric acid in the mother's stomach. When the tadpoles hatch, they will also start to produce PGE2, which is excreted alongside a mucus from the tadpole's gills. When the tadpoles are in the stomach, the mother doesn't eat and must rely on built up energy stores. As tadpoles grow bigger and bigger, the mother's lungs collapse in order to make space. The mother then relies upon gas exchanges through her skin in order to survive. The mother then simply regurgitates the young over a period of a few weeks. Or if under threat, she may regurgitate all of them at once. Now obviously these frogs are now fully extinct, so don't face any more threats, but let's see what caused them to go extinct in the first place. It's not entirely sure what exactly caused their extinction, it was probably a combination of factors, but one thing is for certain, it was caused by human involvement. Firstly, it is thought a human introduced fungal pathogen may have wiped out some individuals. The chytrid fungus is a fungus prevalent in many amphibian species that causes chytridiomycosis in amphibians and has wiped out many species. It is thought that this fungus was transmitted to the gastric brooding frog populations by human activity, most likely logging that was occurring in the area. Climate change causing warmer temperatures in Australia is also thought to have an effect as warm climates accelerate the spread of the disease. Invasive pig species are also thought to have damaged the riverbanks and flow of water in their streams. Invasive weeds also upset the flow of the water, and wildfires in the area may have damaged the water quality. All of this culminated in the two species being declared extinct by the mid-1980s, after the southern species had only just been discovered in 1972, and the northern species were discovered only a year year before it was never seen again. Despite all of this, there have been some strong efforts to bring it back from extinction. The Lazarus Project is attempting to clone the species from preserved specimens that they have. In 2013, embryos were successfully cloned by the University of Newcastle and the University of New South Wales, however there is still a very long way to go to produce a living, breathing individual. But we should all be happy that there are some humans out there trying to undo the damage that we have done to the earth. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.